personal finance PowerPoint presentation. Probate. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia Probate. What it is and how it works with and without a will, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Julia Kagan, updated March 14th, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been looking at estate planning in general, then focusing in on particular components and tools of estate planning. This time we're focusing in on probate, asking the question, what is probate? So the term probate refers to a legal process in which the validity and authenticity of a will are determined. So you have the will at the time before death, then our goal when we're setting up our estate planning process will be in part to try to make sure that our assets are assigned in accordance with what we would like them to be assigned to at the point of death and try to make it as easy as possible for our loved ones to manage the process at that point in time. So the probate may be applied then in the process depending on the circumstances. So probate also refers to the general administration of a deceased person's will or the estate of a deceased person without a will. So note that the will is not like a separate legal entity kind of thing like a trust so the will is going to be going into place at the point in time of death that's when it's going to take effect and typically you're going to have to go through the probate in order to uh, determine the authenticity of the will and get the the legal authorization to uh, go forward with what has been stated within it generally if there's no will then you're going to have to go through that legal process of probate as well without the benefit of the will helping you out and then then you go to the default of whatever the law is uh, where you are at so after an asset holder dies the court appoints an executor named in the will or an administrator if there is no will to administer the process of probate so if there is a will and then you go through the probate the court kind of process and they say hey this will is legitimate we're giving authority to this last will here and uh, we're going to say that the person that was named as the executor within it now has the authority necessary to administer the the will but if there is no will we still need someone as an administrator assigned by the court to go through the process needed to go through so this involves collecting the dece the deceased's assets to pay any liabilities that remain on their estate and to distribute the assets to beneficiaries so it's similar to a corporation in this case because we're talking about the, the financial component of a person's holdings after they have died so now you, the idea would be well they got basically a balance sheet at that point in time they might have some income still as well but they got basically a balance sheet assets liabilities you would think that you're going to take what's there and you're going to have to pay off the liabilities hopefully there's more assets than liabilities if not then you'll have to manage that situation you pay off the liabilities and then you're going to have to allocate what's left over of the assets to the beneficiaries sounds easy sounds straightforward not always so however because we could have a situation for example where you have more assets than liabilities but one of the assets is a home and so uh you can't really liquidate the home that easily so what are you going to do in order to pay off the liabilities and so on and so forth hopefully those kind of things are helped out through a will <laughs> that can help you to kind of kind of uh, list that stuff out otherwise different people might have different opinions about what's going to happen here how probate works probate is the analysis and transfer administration of estate assets previously owned by a deceased person when a property owner dies their assets are commonly reviewed by a probate court the court provides the final ruling on the division and distribution of assets to beneficiaries. A probate proceeding will typically begin by analyzing whether or not the deceased person has provided a legalized will. So clearly, if you're going into probate, first question or one of the first things on the table would be, hey, do they have a will? Can we legitimize the will that could help us out in this process? In many cases, the deceased person has established documentation which contains instructions on how how their assets should be distributed after death that could be helpful however in some cases the deceased does not leave a will there are special circumstances that occur with both situations that we've listed below probate with a will so a deceased person with a will is known as a testator so we got some complicated 
terminology once you get used to it. It's not so bad like any terminology, but it can be a little bit confusing at first. When a testator dies, the executor is responsible for initiating the probate process. The executor is typically a family member. The will can also provide details on a specified executor. The executor is responsible for filing the will with the probate court. State, uh, states can have different rules for time frame in which a will must be filed after death. So different states might have different time frames and due dates. Filing the will initiates the probate process. So once the will is filed, if the will is, if you have a will, that's going to initiate the process. The probate process is a court supervised proceeding in which the authenticity of the will left behind is proven to be valid and accepted as the true last testament of the deceased. So if someone dies and, and things are prepared for and there's a will, then you can go through the probate with the will that's going to start the process in place and hopefully then get some you know authorization of the authenticity of the will to apply, you know, hopefully go forward with the wishes that are outlined within it. So the court officially appoints the executor named in the will. So if everything goes well, they approve the will, they give it authenticity, then you would think they would go with the executor in the will, which gives the executor the legal power to act on behalf of the deceased. So now, of course, the deceased can no longer allocate their assets and so on. It's been given to the executor to do this. The executor, the will typically designates a legal representative or executor approved by the court. This person is responsible for locating and overseeing all the assets of the deceased. The executor has the est estimate, the value of the estate, by using either the date of death value or the alternative valuation date as specified by the Internal Revenue Code, the IRS. Now, this could be important if, of course, the estate in, in is subject to estate taxes. So if they're subject to the estate taxes in particular, then you're going to have to determine how big is the estate. Because remember, we're usually used to an income tax, meaning you get taxed when you earn the income. If you're subject to the estate taxes at the point of death, they're basically taxing on the balance sheet, and you have to determine how much the assets are worth at that point in time, which can be difficult because things like stocks and so on, you can look at the market at that point in time to help you to determine. But things like a home, which are unique in nature, can be more difficult to do that. You have to pick a point in time uh, that you're going to make the, the valuation as of. Most assets that are subject to a probate administration come under the supervision of a probate court and the place where the decedent lived at death. The exception is real estate. Probate for real estate may need to be extended to any counties in which the real estate is located. Clearly, real estate is going to be subject to a particular location in some ways. The executor also has to pay off any taxes and debt owed by the deceased from the estate. So clearly, if they owe taxes uh, or, or liabilities, you would think the general process is they're going to have to pay those things off. So creditors usually have a limited amount of time, approximately one year from the date of death to make any claims against the estate for money owed to them. Claims that are rejected by the executor can be taken to court where a probate judge will have the final say on whether or not the claim is justified. The executor is also responsible for filing the final personal income tax returns on behalf of the deceased. So when the deceased died, they probably died mid-year, they gotta file the final tax return uh, for them. Any estate taxes that are pending can also come due within one year from the date of death. After the inventory of the estate has been taken, the value of assets calculated and debts paid off, the executor will then seek authorization from the court to distribute whatever is left of the estate to the beneficiaries. Notice that in an ideal world, that's kind of done last because what you want to do is you want to get the estate and you want to take care of the liabilities. If you have to liquidate some of the assets or something like that, then you may have to do that to basically pay off the liabilities and then distribute to the owners in a similar way as you would do in a liquidation for a corporation. If you do it otherwise or differently, if, for example, you pay the, the beneficiaries before you pay off the liabilities, then it's going to be difficult to pay off the liabilities, right? Because now they're not going to want to give you the money back to pay the liabilities. So you want to pay the liabilities first before you give the money to the beneficiaries so that you don't run into that problem would be the general the general way you'd like things to flow. Probate without a will. 
When a person dies without a will, he is said to have died intestate. So that's another technical term. And intestate estate is also one where the will presented to the court has been deemed to be invalid. So if they gave a will to the court and the court says, no, this does not look like a valid will, then you're in the same kind of situation without a will intestate. The probate process for an intestate estate includes distributing the decedent's assets according to state law. So then the question would be, well, how am I going to move forward if there's no will helping us with the distribution process? Well, then you fall back on the state law as the default. So if a deceased person has no assets, probate may not be necessary. So if they don't have anything of value to uh, administer out, then obviously then you have less of an issue or less of a problem of doing that administration process. In general, a probate court proceeding usually begins with the appointment of an administer to oversee the estate of the deceased. The administer function as an executor receiving all legal claims against the estate and paying off the outstanding debts. So you got the same kind of situation. You've got someone that you would hope you would need to then process the, the management of the assets and liabilities that are owed or and have of the deceased individual. So the administrator is tasked with locating any legal heirs of the deceased, including surviving spouses, children, and parents. The probate court will assess what assets need to be distributed among the legal heirs and how to distribute them. The probate law in most states divide property among their surviving spouse and children of the deceased. So then you can divide things up, the assets, in accordance with whatever the state law says. So asset transfer to the government is known as uh, escheatment. Escheatment, another technical term. States do typically have a time frame for the claiming of any assets by an heir or may uh, step forward, who may step forward. So in other words, again, you have this situation where you've got these assets that are sitting here. There's a statute of limitations generally for, for the heirs to come up and claim those assets. Otherwise, they might go to the state. Uh, spouses as joint property owners. Community property laws can recognize both spouses as joint property owners in an in-state proceeding. So now we've got some differences in terms of how people see uh, property in terms of joint property, say for married couples, for example. So that comes the term or how marriage is seen. In other words, as a taxpayer, as a citizen, are you seen as one legal entity, which has your kind of your assets kind of combined together? Or are you seen kind of more as two entities that are, are married? from say uh, a, a tax perspective and a legal perspective. So there could be some differences from state to state. So once again, community property laws can recognize both spouses as joint property owners in an intestate proceeding. In effect, the distribution hierarchy typically starts with their surviving spouse, which kind of makes sense, of course, because if you think of two individuals coming together in marriage as one legal entity, you would think that that legal entity in essence owns the assets and the liabilities and hasn't ended, hasn't died until the second one dies, right? So if unmarried or widowed at the time of death, assets are usually divided among any surviving children. So clearly, obviously, after you die, if there's surviving children, you would think that would be the next place to go. Or maybe that's just obvious to me because that's of where I'm where I live or whatnot. But in any case, that makes sense to me. After a spouse and ch children have considered, other relatives may also be deemed appropriate for distribution. So then you're going to expand the net out after that point if there are no children. So close friends of the deceased will not normally be added to the list of the beneficiaries under the state's probate laws for uh, interstate estates. So usually if you're just depending on state law, it's going to go through the family line, not typically, well, this is my best friend, so I have a claim from best friend stuff. So that might, you could do, you could give something to your best friend, but you typically you would think you would need a will or something like that to do so. However, if the deceased had a joint account uh, with right of survivorship or owned property jointly with another, the joint asset would automatically be owned by the surviving partner. So you could have other ways other than a will possibly for something to, to go from one person to another, not through the probate process, generally by holding it in joint. So if you had a joint account or something like that. So is a probate always required? 
So it is important to know whether a probate is required following the death of an individual. The probate process can take a long time to finalize. The more complex or contested the estate is, the more time it will take to settle and distribute the assets. The longer the duration, the higher the cost. Probating an estate without a will is typically costlier than probating one with a valid will. So clearly, if you had a will, you would think even though you're still possibly going through probate in that case, it would be easier because you could follow the will. Hopefully, it's a well thought out will. But any will you would think would be better than nothing. However, uh, the time and cost required of each are still high. Also, since the proceedings of a probate court are publicly recorded, avoiding probate would ensure that all settlements are done privately. So different states have different laws concerning probate and whether probate is required after the death of a testator. Some, ask, some states have a specified estate value which requires probate. For example, probate laws in Texas hold that if the value of the estate is less than $75,000, then probate may be skipped. So if an estate is small enough to bypass the probate process, then the estate's assets may be claimed using alternative legal actions such as an affidavit. Typically, if a deceased person's debts exceed their assets, probate is not necessarily initiated and alternative actions may be taken. Some assets can bypass probate because beneficiaries have been initiated through contractual terms, pension plans, life insurance proceeds, 401k plans, medical savings accounts, and individual retirement plans or IRAs that have designated beneficiaries will not to be, need to be probated. In other words, when you set these kind of things up, there, you, gotta, you typically have a, a beneficiary listed already and so that's it's all pretty much set up already for those particular types of assets likewise uh, assets jointly owned with a right of survivorship can bypass to the probate per, uh, probate process another popular way to bypass probate is through the use of a trust so we've talked about trusts a bit in prior presentations you can think of them kind of like a separate legal entity Right, and you might have various reasons that you're going to set up a trust, but it's kind of you can think of it kind of like a corporation that has its own uh, its own rights in some ways, like to own property, for example, and it can live in essence past or beyond an individual life until the terms of whatever its existence was brought into being to be are fulfilled. So you might use a trust to make the probate process easier, or you might use a, a trust for other estate planning purposes that we've talked about in prior presentation. Overall, minimizing costs associated with the probate process can be prudent. Accumulated expenses can include court fees, professional service hours, and administration costs. Having an easily authenticated will is one of the most common ways to quickly move through a probate process and efficiently distribute assets appropriately.